I've spent just as much time thinking about how I say it as, as what it says. If, you, if you're new to church, you haven't been for a while. You... <clears throat> Thank you for that reading. So we're very, very well done. And because you're, you're quite a scary lot to stand in front of, really. Uh, so now I've got two pages of notes here. Uh, when I preached this sermon last night to myself at 11 o'clock, it took an hour and a half. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that today because I realize that we've got quite a lot of young people. In, uh, but I just want to share with you uh, this passage of scripture, or certainly part of this passage of scripture, because it's done me good over the last uh, week or two as I've been studying. Our vicar normally gives us quite a few weeks to study which is quite good because we need it. Uh, and so I've been reading this passage of scripture time and time and time again, and it's blessed me. So I hope it'll do the same for you this morning. But first of all, I just want to own in on the first words, six days. That's how it starts off our reading. Six, what happened six days before? That's very important because for the writer here and the other gospel writers, uh, Matthew and Luke, uh, they, they all open up with this word, six days. Well, Luke says eight days, actually, or about eight days. But that's, that suits me down to the ground, because I, I, I realise then that everybody's an individual writer. But six days before what had happened, well, I'll tell you, they were, they were in a place called Caesarea Philippi, and they were there... And Jesus was talking to the people and, and preaching as he did. And then he turned to his disciples and he asked them a question. He said, who do men say that I am? Who are they, who are they referring to when they see me? Well, the disciples said, well, some people, some people think you're John the Baptist. John the Baptist had, had his head chopped off before. And so he was, he was, he was, he was long gone. But some people thought that this preacher, this young man from Nazareth, was like John the Baptist because of the, the, the way he spoke to people. He spoke to everybody the same, whether he was talking to the, to the king, whether he was talking to the soldiers, whether he was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. It made no difference. His message was the same. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so some people said, some people think you're John the Baptist. Other people said, you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Now, Jeremiah was noted for being a, a sad prophet. When Jeremiah was around, everything went wrong. And, and, and his eyes were full of tears at many times. And some people looked at Jesus and they thought, he's Jeremiah. He's come back. He's, he's a man of sorrows. When he was there at his friend's uh, tomb, Lazarus, the Bible says, Jesus was there and he wept. Uh, and so some people think, thought he was Jeremiah. Some people thought he was just one of the prophets or Elijah, uh, one of the, the, the great prophets. But then Jesus turns to his disciples and he asks this question, which I want you to answer today, if possible. This is the question that Jesus asked the disciples. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And Peter comes out with this fantastic statement. He says, you, you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus says, yes, yes, you've got it right. That's who I am. And this is what happened six days before our sermon begins. Uh, this group of people recognized that Jesus was someone special. He wasn't just an ordinary man. He wasn't just a carpenter from Nazareth. Some folks, you know, pointed to Jesus and they said, hey, preacher, he's just, he's just a carpenter. He's just a carpenter from Nazareth. But then others said, he speaks, when he speaks, he speaks like, like no one else we've ever heard. He, his, his words are so marvelous. And so here uh, we find that this group of disciples and got a grasp of just who Jesus was. Then the next little bit about our story uh, says that Jesus then takes three of them, uh, Peter, James, and John, and he takes them up into a high mountain. 
just outside. He leaves the rest of the disciples down below. I don't know what they were doing. Most probably brewing up or something down there. Uh, but he leaves the rest of the disciples and he takes these three up to a high mountain. And the Bible says when they got to the top of the high mountain, he was transfigured before them. Now, I looked up in the dictionary what transfigured means, because I'm pretty thick at times. Uh, and, and it just means completely, you, 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 you change. Something absolutely happens to you, and, and you're a changed person. You're a changed outlook. And here, at the top of the mountain, these three disciples, they looked, and they saw Jesus. And Jesus was shining absolutely glowing. Uh, the Bible says he, he, was, he was better than anything you could wa wash, you ladies, when you get your washing out and you hold it up and you think, that is white. Or if it's football kit, it's generally a bit on the grey side. Uh, but here, the Bible says that Jesus was glowing uh, like nothing else on earth. That nothing else could whiten it as, 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 uh, as Jesus was. And there on the mountain, these three disciples, they saw di a difference in Jesus. From being down at the bottom, recognizing that he was the Christ, they now came up to the top of the mountain, and the Bible says they saw his glory. My dear friends, Jesus is in glory now. He was in glory before he came into this world. In John chapter 17, he says to, uh, he, he's, he's praying this prayer. He says, oh, Lord, he said, I, I want them to, to, see, to see the glory that I had with you before the world was. We've been singing about it this morning. Indescribable uh, what it is. He's the creator of the universe. And here, the creator of the universe was on the top of the mountain with these three disciples who were scared to death because they were in a, uh, they, they, they'd never been here before. This was a new new situation for them. And, and, and there they were. And Jesus was transfigured before them. And on the scene comes two great preachers. One of them was Moses. Now, Moses, as we know, can, anyone can any of you young folks tell me what Moses was famous for? Just let's have one or two hands up. Go on you. Exactly, love. Leading the Israelites out of Egypt. That's what he was most famous for. Parting of the Red Sea and all that story. But he's also famous for going up a mountain and getting something. Can anyone tell me what they were? You. The Ten Commandments. He's famous for that as well. He, he's, he represents the law. And, and here, Moses is arriving. Now, just quickly, I'll tell you. Moses as he led the people out of Egypt, like we've heard from there, through the wilderness, he gets to the borders of the, the new land, Israel, and God says to him, you're not going in. He said, you spoke unadvisedly with your lips. You spoke to my people wrongly, and I, I, I'm not having you going in. You'll have to wait on this side of Jordan. And so Moses never even took the people into the promised land. He left it to his understudy, Joshua. But now we see Moses in the promised land. He's on the mountain just outside Jerusalem, and he's there. And he's talking with Jesus. Also, there's there is Elijah. Now, when I read this, I thought, it doesn't say there were two men who looked possibly like Moses and Elijah. It doesn't say that in the Bible. It says... And talking with him, there was Moses and Elijah, these two great people from the past that had left glory because that's where they'd been for 1,400 years, 1,000 years in the case of, of, of uh, Elijah. Uh, they'd left glory and they'd come to the top of the mountain to talk with Jesus. And it's interesting to know what they were talking about. I would be interested to know what these two people that had left heaven were going to talk about. You can't find it in the chapter that we've read here in, in Mark's gospel. You've got to look in Luke. You've got to flip over a bit. And, and Luke says they spoke to him about what he was going to accomplish at Jerusalem. 
They spoke about his death. They spoke about going to the cross. And these two uh, people that had come from history, they came back onto the scene for a short time to maybe encourage the master and, and, and to talk about what was going to happen in these next few weeks and next few months of his life here on earth. Because as you know, and as I know, and as the Bible tells us, Jesus had come into the world to save sinners. And to save sinners, he had to die on a cross. And that's what they were talking about here. And while he was, while they were talking together there, the Bible says a cloud came and covered them. And this huge cloud came and covered everything on the top of the mountain. And then they heard a voice from heaven. And this voice from heaven was God himself. He was there. And, 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 and this voice said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And my dear friends, I can't give you any better advice than that if I live to be a hundred. This is Jesus. This is God's son. Listen to him. Listen to what he has to say. Get all of the Bible because that's the word of God. And, and listen to what he has to say. And then the Bible says the cloud lifted and they saw Jesus only. Jesus was the center on that mountain top, just outside Caesarea Philippi. And there he was, he was the center of attraction. And his glory was shown to these three uh, young fishermen, these disciples, Peter, James, and John. Now I've not looked at my notes yet, and I don't know where I'm up to on my notes. I'm somewhere middle page. Uh, but what, I, what I'd just like to pass on to you this morning is this. Do you know Jesus? Or is, is Jesus, uh, to you, just a good man? Just someone that, well, when he spoke, he, was, he, was, he talked sense. He, he, was, he was gentle. He was kind. He was a nice man. And, 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 and what he said, if we live by his rules, we'll be doing okay. Or is Jesus someone special? Is he just the carpenter? Nothing special about him at all. You can get by without bothering with Jesus. He's not, it's not, it's not the right important issue in, 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 in the, the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> or is he, and I just want to all in on this because I feel very, very strongly about it. Is he just a swear word to you? I, I was absolutely shocked to the core I, I watched with my wife uh, the television and we were looking at Bradley Walsh and his son has anybody seen it one or two okay uh, Bradley Walsh and his son and what they do the son is quite a fit individual if you think of me you know you'd be right but, except for the pouch uh, but Bradley's son is as fit as a flea, uh, and, and, and what he's doing, he's encouraging his dad to, to step out of it and do things he wouldn't normally do and, and, and push the boat out a bit and get the adrenaline flowing. And that's what they're doing. They're driving around in a great big mobile home, paid for by the BBC, no doubt. Anyway, what I want to tell you about it is this, and this is what shocked me. He's on the top of a, uh, a football stadium where the, 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 the stands and, the, and the, 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 the cover goes right out over the pitch and it's huge height and he's on a rope and the rope is fastened to the other side and he's harnessed in at this side and then they shove him off and the son is there looking at the dad and thinking, hey, you cheat, you're not going to do this. And Bradley saying, oh, yes, I am. I might be, I might be stupid, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a go. And, and they pushed him off. And as they pushed him off, he went into nothing, and he was swinging, and his language was terrible. He was, you can tell that because they bleeped it. And as he was going down, they were going, bleep, 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 bleep. As he's swinging like this uncontrollably in the air, and then they come back. 
Now, the point that I'm making is this. The next test was he was on a quad bike, not the not called quad bikes, uh, on the water, ski, jet ski. He was on a jet ski that would go 0 to 60 in, I don't know, a couple of seconds. And Bradley was on this, and his job was to open it up and go around some boys uh, on the thing and do a, 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 an S turn and then come back. And he opened it up, and as he's setting off, he shouts out in a loud voice, Jesus Christ! Do you think they bleeped it? No. No, they didn't bleep that. That was acceptable. So it's, it's not acceptable to use the F word or to, to use the, the other words when you're swinging through the air because you've got to bleep them, but you can use the name of Jesus anytime you want, in any context you want, and you can blast, and, and it doesn't matter. The BBC don't care about that. That's just part of the course. We, both my wife and I were looking at and we both picked that up and we were both shocked at the same time. That's who Bradley Walsh thinks Jesus is. He doesn't know him. He's never met him. He's never had the revelation that these three fishermen had on the top of the mountain, seeing the glory. Did you, he just knows him most probably as an historical person. And maybe you're the same today. Maybe you're thinking he's just a, a, a person in history. A person that we come to at Christmas time and we remember the little baby in the, in, in the, uh, the, the cradle and, and what have you. And, and, that's, and we see him just as a humble carpenter. But my dear friends, I want to tell you this morning that Jesus is the Christ. He's the son of the living God. And it's endorsed by his father, the, 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 the one who's in glory now, who was came down to earth when the cloud covered, and he said, this is my son. Listen to him. Make sure you, you, you know him. And I'd just like to encourage each and every one of you this morning to make sure that you know him. Not know about him. Many people know about him. Other religions know about him. They think he's good. They think what he says is nice. Uh, they think it's wholesome and the way to be. But they don't know him. But the Apostle Paul nails it when he says, Oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. I, I want to get to know Jesus. And my dear friends, I encourage each and every one of you to read your Bible, to get to know this Jesus that was recognized in Caesarea Philippi that was seen on the top of the mountain in all his glory. The glory that he will have, by the way, when he finally comes back to earth. Maybe this week. We don't know. He doesn't know either. So don't ask him. But he's coming back, and he's going to come back in his glory. He's coming back to planet Earth, the planet that he created and put in motion uh, so many... Uh, Whatever it is, uh, years ago, he's coming back, and he's coming back in his glory. The heavens, the Bible tells us, are going to rent in two. The trumpet's going to sound. The angels are going to appear. And Jesus Christ is coming back to take his people to be with him for all eternity. I want to be one of those that goes, yes, yes, 